Unchained was crazy. And before we even talk about Unchained even more, I just wanna I just wanna hear it from the man himself. Let's 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 just watch Jesse Cotton's first place Unchained deck before we do anything else. Let me just pull that up real quick and we will talk about the format after. All right, let's go. Hey guys, Jesse Cotton here. Welcome back to Luxury Gaming. He's got first place in YCS Vancouver with Unchained. Uh, deck is not that some not that different from the deck I played last week with Result, but there were some changes, so we'll go through it real quick. We're going to send a huge shout out to Luxury Games and um, Card Market, our sponsors. Also, the sleeves I use when we don't have to resleeve, uh, the Team Sam sleeves, go check out the store, tsx1.com. Use the code Potato Sam for your 10% off. Uh, yes, let's get into it. Tour guides, still the best. Um, seeing this card used against me, I feel kind of like sad. Like, I don't, I don't like when my opponents open this. I don't understand how people are arguing about tour guide. I'm gonna be honest with you. I am not sure why people are even considering not playing tour guide. It makes no sense to me, but. Well. So that should mean something. That should kind of tell you that this card is good. Um, sometimes you get Ash and Pass, but like you can say that with any combination. Um, the big six is these cards are nuts. Um, three one again. It's kind of fine to draw, but like going first is definitely worse. One Sarama, again, like, it can be awkward, one a -bomb. No Disaster. Um, so Disaster is only really important in the mirror match. And if we've seen a lot of mirrors, maybe it goes back in, but it was just contributing to Bricks, and the only matchup I actually cared about it was for the mirror match. Um, I didn't side it, but there's also merit to be siding for the mirror. It, I kind of went to it like three times, but all those were mirrors. Um, yeah, uh, every other matchup though is a Brick in your deck, it's not worth, like, the, the hit to consistency. Um, three Prison. We escape. This was a bit of a change. We went to chamber and one whaling. Um, this isn't because we draw a lot of the traps, or whatever. This could do a third name instead of Shavara. Search so you get more triggers. Um, also, randomly versus like cashier prep. Now you can you have a, a spell to trigger. It's like fine. It's uh, on field effect is whenever you link someone an unchained monster, you can target a card field and destroy it, which can come up um, sometimes. So the utility is cool. Like, I know for skill drain is really good, but it never came up to me. I like this. I've been, I've, I have, I had this in one of my builds on the early dueling book. I was like, why don't you play one of this card? Cause it seems like a nice option. It's not nice. It's nothing crazy. It's, it's just all right. I think. Uh, but yeah, like the only difference is you have to take out one of these. I'm like, opening this isn't very good anyways. If you're going to brick on either of these, it won't make a difference. Uh, this, however, if you brick, it was drawn like Sarama and, and this, this like, at least that's like disruption. So that's why you should play three of this one. Um, you know, arguably this one may be better in the grind game. You just manage your resources right, you'll still be fine. Um, so this is the one that doesn't suck as much to draw if you get stopped. Um, yeah, those gun chain cards. Play the DD cards again. They're really good. Um, yeah, very strong. Definitely don't cut them. They break fields a lot and they're extenders. Like this, these cards are really strong. Obviously, this, this sucks to draw, but it's so powerful. Also, the follow up you get by Caesar dying and adding this is insane. Uh, three Eclipse. I think this is like probably the best non entering card of the format. This and like Shifter. I made a video about it, but it's not posted yet. Um, what was the third card I said? Oh, Thrust. Yeah, I think this card is nuts, though. Um, really good going second, better than the Book of Moon is. Like, going first is better than Book of Moon as well, because like, it clears everything. You still keep this going first in the mirror, because this actually does stop them most of the time. Um, when paired to everything else. So I like this a lot. This is the one thing I, I don't like about Unchained, because Unchained is a really, really cool deck. Don't get me wrong. Like I, I Overall, the fact that Unchained is to be considered probably the best deck in the game right now, uh is in my opinion a phenomenal thing for Yu-Gi-Oh! like this deck is is very very based uh it's a based mid-range deck back and forth duels uh i love the the uh i love that unchained is a playable deck right now like or arguably even the best like i think it's 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 a very good showing for Yu-Gi-Oh! that a deck like this literally wins ycs's uh i i think it's phenomenal the one thing that i don't like about it is the fact that it the the the, the best version right now i mean probably the best version they know more than i do probably about it is that the best version plays pricks like that but i i never I, i'm never a big fan of this like it's like it's kind of like when the best deck in the format is super cool but it plays gamma i i just don't like it's just a small it's just a small gripe uh, right, that gripe that i have with it it's like uh, i i hate having to play the blue dog the the requiem king and whatnot in my deck because it's just i i hate it but yeah you gotta make it a draw too but it doesn't matter the, the tempo is worth it. Prosperity Wish is probably the best card currently legal. Um, this card is nuts. Uh, three thrusts. Yeah, I mean, this card is really good. There's just so many powerful non engine cards that are only good in some spots or some matchups. You know, to play all the one of them is insane. And on this deck as well, just setting the spells and traps is like extenders is really good. 
uh, the one talent to search. And we made one duster uh, in fear of dweller stuff. It happened once to me, um, but pretty much when I got like dweller, I wanted to have like this to search duster or prospect to contract and like try to get a combination of the two. So you can like duster them, contract, clear the field, and then make Zeus. Um, so that way you clear their field and on Zeus still through dweller. That was the logic there. This was a 41st card, and I just decided uh, when it, obviously it's not great going first, but I felt like it was worth it going second. Um, that's a solid plan. I don't know what deck what deck dwellers are you right now. I'm not sure which decks can really because Pearly can't, Dragon Link can't, uh Unchained can't, Rescue Ace can. Un Rescue Ace can, so I guess they uh did they respect Rescue Ace enough to play a Duster in the main deck? That's interesting, because Rescue Ace. I think the only rescue ace that topped was my boy, uh, my boy Quanto. Uh, I think that was the only rescue ace. Vanquish Soul, I guess Vanquish Soul can, yeah. I, ah. um, did I regret it? I don't know. I didn't need it that much, but maybe you can get away with it. It opens up a spot in the side deck as well, because like, you're, you're siding either way. The card's good. Three nymphs. So we took out the Book of Moons for this, um, me and a couple other people. First this is. I, I think this is interesting. Uh, Nib, Nib is the perfect. Um, Nib is the perfect example of staying ahead of the meta. I made there's a whole video on on my plus channel where I talked about this when Pac won the YCS the week before this, uh, where Pac didn't play any hand traps because he had a read on the format where like everyone played a lot of hand traps, so he didn't want to play a deck that lost to hand traps, and he didn't want to play a lot of hand traps himself because the idea is if everyone plays a lot of hand traps. Then um, the decks that are the, the decks that hand traps are good against are not gonna do very well, right? And so you wanna you wanna play cards that are good against the decks that are doing well, which is no hand traps and board breakers instead. Um, but when a deck like Pax does really well in an event, uh, and you see like oh uh, his the the most popular deck right now, which is Unchained, the most successful version of the deck, doesn't play any hand traps and most importantly doesn't play Nib. You can make a call of like, okay, people are going to stop playing around Nib, so I'm going to play Nib again. And then moving forward, you know, uh, moving forward, you're going to be like, hey, uh, no one is, uh, people might copy Jesse's list. So people might want to, might want to start playing around Nib again. And then Nib might not be very good and so on and so forth. It's one of the most important, uh, like qualities, I think, of a player is to, to recognize these things before they actually happen right when you when you have to look at jesse's list after an event and you're gonna see oh he made a call that nib was good for this event and then you do the same next week it might not work anymore you need to be ahead right that's the thing that you need to be able to do and it's it's very hard to it can be very hard to make these calls confidently because you're gonna be wrong sometimes right you're gonna be wrong you're gonna maybe you're gonna put nib into your deck and then everyone is gonna play around nib still or you're gonna be, um, you're gonna not play Nib, and then all of your opponents still play into Nib because you you made the call at the wrong time. But the uh, sometimes like like the Beat Cop combo, no, the Mystic Mind Beat Cop was kind of was the same thing because it worked for one event, but for that one event it was insane. And then the week after, everyone has changed their Mystic Mind out to a different card that worked against Beat Cop, so it would not it, it would not work again, right? So, you know, that, that's that's the kind of examples that that I'm, I'm uh, that are like helpful for understanding the what I'm describing, right? It's like with these kind of things, it's very important you uh, you make these calls before the people know about it, right? And so I think this was a good time to play Nib when like um, Hack last week didn't play it, and I I don't think people expected Nib in um, in the main deck from from Jesse this weekend um at least i probably wouldn't have you know because pack also went about like oh the the good unchained players there's a lot of lines that play around nib right but like when no one is playing nib why would you bother going for a line that plays around nib you know what i'm saying but yeah really not a player on this properly yet but also i think this card shines when you go first in the mirror like you should side either way because it's really good it was like rescue section while you um random bullshit combo but also like Either of these going first, acting as board clears. So you set up your standard field. They have to use like maybe half their hand to deal with your field. And these will deal with the rest of their cards. Um, and then you kill them the next turn. You almost never like fully lock them out of the game. 
So you will get a specific grind, but once you learn how to navigate it, having a boat like this is how you win. So insane going first. Uh, this is better than this because they can't really force it out that well. It obviously just contributes. Um, yeah, I was happy with this. And obviously there's like a lot of Dragon Link decks because this deck, the deck has a decent matchup against this deck. I don't think it's insane, it's fine. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is against Dragon, obviously. That might that, that's something we're going to talk about the position of dragon link as well I need to keep that in my mind i don't want to dis interrupt the profile right now but dragon link is in an interesting spot right now 41 cards brought it back down to 40 and then went back to 41 with the with the duster then we're just swapping books for nibs and then uh razorus thank you for the five months appreciate you a lot also one small schmied thank you for the tier one appreciate that thank you and the disaster for duster i guess uh, as for the extra deck there were some changes here as well again so dare I say the same. I never summoned it, but it really only matters for cash and ship the decks, but it's like zero. Um, two Caesar is a difference. Mm. So I kind of wish I played it last weekend, and I didn't because it only ever matters in the mirror, and I didn't know how many people would play the mirror. You'll see this deck, I had a lot more preparation for the mirror match now. Um, in the mirror though, you like to lead with this, and then be able to make another one on the, on the following turn to clear the field again, or to beat Nib. Um, this card is incredibly, incredibly good. The not once per turn, the, you can attack with- Mr. Gibb, I think, but 12. Uh, I read on Twitter somewhere that I, there's something that confused me a lot, but let, I, 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 let me let me finish the extra deck. Mach and X, um, you sometimes summon over these. I mean, you summon up this, I guess enough. But yeah, 50 combo. Um, you could maybe play a second. I thought about it. Zeus, actually, I'm going to summon this tournament. Still see for cash, but you definitely need it. Um, on chain cards. So one else Yama, um, it matters in the mirror match to have a third sometimes, but still not that often. Uh, most of the time we ended up banishing the third off Yama, I mean off Prosperity anyway, so uh, just cut it for the Caesar because that actually came out more. And, like If you have to choose between third Yama or second Caesar in the mirror, this is better in the mirror. Um, but there are some times where you want a third one. Um, Anguish, one of you have Ducky Dawn Space for more now. I don't really need more. A-bomb, this card's still fine, comes up sometimes. Unicorn is very important for clearing fields and extra defensive lines with Rage. Griffin, which I summoned zero times as a power tournament. It's good as a mix-up, but that's about it. Uh, I really like the Caesar play way more. Uh, that's what I wanted to talk about, because I saw people, believe it or not, I saw people say that in order to hit Unchained on the ban list, they should ban Nightmare Griffin. Uh, which is a weird take to me. It's a weird take uh, it's not straight up wrong. It's not like it's not like an idiotic thing to say that Nightmare Griffin should be banned because uh, Nightmare Griffin is a powerful floodgate, and it has popped up a couple times in the recent months where decks would just make Nightmare Griffin right. Like for example, the Life Twin Runic Sprite deck made a uh, made a Nightmare Griffin lock as well, right? And it was very powerful. Uh, Griffin is a very powerful card, and if you have the opinion that Nightmare Griffin should be banned. I think you're right. I think that's an okay... I think it's a fine opinion to have. But if your reasoning is... Uh, if your reasoning is that that would hit Unchained in a major way, I think that's crazy. I think, like Jesse is saying right here, and I completely agree, I think that the traditional Unchained opener is much better than the Nightmare Griffin opener. The, the, the Wave King Caesar plus the... The soul of uh, the soul of rage is a phenomenal opener, especially if you play the contract, the, the DDD contract package, because you can search follow up with the with the Caesar. Uh, I think the Nightmare Griffin line is decent, but it isn't like I don't think it's better than the other line. Uh, and banning Griffin would only slightly hit this thing. Uh, but yeah, I said so last week. That hasn't changed. I think it's, it's better follow up. It's a bit more resilient. I just always and I, I just always go for for that. Like I guess for purely you can maybe like if, like Tiberi you'd rather go this, but I don't know, man. It just really always felt better to do the other stuff and play for follow up. Like having like several interrupts plus a lot of follow ups felt better than Griffin. Um, and also being safer in hand traps. Maybe this cut is cut for something for second back index or thirty armor. Griffin should be banned regardless. It's only ever used for the least fun game states ever. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. I agree with you. That is that is a very reasonable argument to make. I'm just saying the argument from the angle of, oh, uh, they should hit Unchained by banning Griffin. That I, that, I don't think that's a good argument. But I, I agree with what you'd said, yeah. There's like other cards you may play. Uh, I don't like access code still. Never would have needed it. Uh, Goddess comes up in the mirror and random unhittable cards like Corwind or um, Chaos Android. I guess uh, Chaos Android you can kill with the trap, but 
Yeah, those type of cards. Um, and then also cards that you don't float in, like the mirror match, just getting rid of their links. Uh, that's cool. It also negates stuff in the mirror, like sometimes, so that's worth it. Mob character, which is cool. Um, sometimes just using it for the protection effect is nice. Um, you still play this without the Griffin lines because it's good. Uh, it's a link off of either of these. And, and there's some anti nib lines where it comes up where it's like, um, you get nibbed and then you make this, and then you link that plus their nib into this, and you just revive this, uh, and you can make Griffin. Which I guess that requires Griffin, but like, that's one way to play on nib, uh, or play through nib. Uh, either way though, this card just comes up still sometimes. It's not like a crazy important card, and I'm always scared of Anshell Pross, but I never get, but I never really get punished. Like, the card's not crazy important. Yep, this deck should act, and then just the one change. Um, and then side deck for the mirror match. We just find steal your board cards. Uh, I already knew about this. That seems very good. That, I like that. I've seen this on the weekend already. It was It's very cool. I love these cards, dude. These, the nostalgia on these type of cards hits different. Whenever I see Marionette Might, Puppet Plant, Electric Virus, uh, is there more? The, the discard to steal specific types. Is there one more? I think that's all, right? I love whenever DC play. I love those cards. They're they're very, very cool. Uh, so Marionette Might, in case you don't know, discard, discard it from your hand to the graveyard to take control of a fiend or a zombie. Um, very, very nice. Um, the last time I remember playing a card like this was during Dragon Ruler. A lot of people used Electric Virus, which was steal a machine or dragon, I think, is Electric Virus. So it was good in the Dragon Ruler mirror. Uh, so yeah, it's not a quick effect. It's not a hand trap. It just breaks the board, right? And you, the, the reason why it has to be specifically Marionette Might is you can steal your opponent's stuff and they can't, uh, they, they, they have the Scrap Dragon Trap, right? So you can steal, you can steal the Unchained Link monster, but they can't chain the, the Scrap Dragon Trap because you don't have a monster on the board, right? For Brazil, but we decided that it probably wasn't going to be enough mirrors to dedicate playing this. Um, and we had more space in the death by cutting book because we felt it was kind of too average against everything. Everything like really shined against like Drew and Cash. And we already felt like we had so much for them. Um, so by cutting that, we made space for this. Steal cards. There's also a piece of anti-spell, which is important because uh, people are copying pack. I really don't like siding cards going first. I'm really oh yeah, anti-spell too, yeah. I think cards like Nib and Eclipse are fine going second and also really, really good going first. And that, that's like what I look for. I like that logic. I like they that. They have to play a little more skillfully, but that's fine. Um, but yeah, Steel, Steel Caesars are good. Um, there are ways to play around it, but it's, it'll at the very least force out stuff from your opponent. Um, I like this card a lot. Juju is one the other card for the mirror match. I mean, um, it also just like breaks the, the Griffin opener immediately, right? Against the Griffin opener, this is completely insane. If they, if, if anyone thinks that the Muckraker plus Griffin is better, you just go Marionette Might and you completely knock them out, right? It's, com it's completely GG. You can banish the Yama and then you kill the Caesar and then nothing floats. Uh, this card's cool as well, and then it's theoretically used against Dragon. Um, and like Despia, I guess, if you play it. I haven't tested how this card works for Skymare. Uh, so I'm not sure if it's good. I'm not sure if it's worth setting I guess you guys can try it for yourself. Uh, unfortunately, you do not have time. Against traditional branded, it's really good. Against Chimera branded, probably not as powerful. Time to practice this card in that match specifically. Uh, I didn't play it in the tournament, so I never even had to try si thought about setting it in. But that's like, I guess, the thought that I'd have. One evenly and two storm. Uh, it's worked out for side patterns that I only had these three side inverse rescue ace. That's sort of back removal cards. I mean, you um, have we had thrust, one evenly in, but oh. I just couldn't side out cards to make more space for evenly. So one was it. Uh, I wanted at least one so that you could search it off thrust. Uh, specifically against Chimera, what they'll do is like drop a sword knight to summon death from it. At which point you just go search this, and if they have like mirror jade Chimera two sets. Usually a book and a Chimera fusion. This punches them pretty hard. Um, three action cards are really important in many matchups. Long first is good too. People side and back or removal like or even these. Having this to balance it out is good as well. It's like, this, this and never just great for going first. Um, just to supplement your hand. Also beats the rest. I found oftentimes I wasn't even stopping anything. I was just holding this for thrust and prosperities. Like the, the broken cards. Um, and then thrust targets. When you get shifted verse cash. Um, and then going first since everything is fine. It's really just book of eclipse. Your own field make it hit, but again, that's not really important as long as you have follow up. And this deck is like the king of follow up, so. Um, barrier for Proly and Chimera decks. Uh, Troll Despair. Uh, thrust thing. This card is, is cuttable. Um, it probably should be cut. I just didn't know what to put in. Like, in theory, we don't really need a thrust target against those decks. You're going to set an unchained card and spine. Uh, it's not like when you get shifted, you really need to have this. But we kind of just, like, comfort pick kept it in. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'd probably reevaluate this card, though. Uh, I just didn't add anything of anything else because it didn't match up with side patterns to add more cards to the mirror or more cards to race. Um, 
in that part we need to be evaluating, I guess. And then Harold will do best for Curly. Um, mm-hmm. You can also put it over his cash uh, because you just... I like the side deck. It makes a lot of sense. That is the one thing I, I... I guess it's the one thing I like about Thrust is the fact that you get really interesting deck building decisions where you play a lot of one-off cards. I like I like cards that are flexible. I, I still think Thrust is an incredibly broken card and might not even maybe it's even too strong but i still think the, the the deck building portion around thrust is fun the the gameplay that thrust provides sometimes not as fun but the 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 deck building portion of thrust i i i like uh no solid list very solid list and um congratulations to jesse for the fifth uh ycs win insane 